Welcome, one and all, everybody, to the Simon Whistler Show with my friends, co-pilot, co-host, number one. I feel like I'm doing the same intro as I did last time because I lack creativity, but maybe that's also, you know, people love familiarity. I like it. You're complimenting me. You can keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying in the last episode, number one, uh, we, we got onto Star Trek and you'd never seen Star Trek and number one is a reference to commander william Riker, who's like the captain's right hand man well he's no sam myers i tell you that much goddamn right but you know who is the real sam myers sam after much discussion and debate over the last several episodes has finally got himself a twitter account so if you like sam and why wouldn't you at this is sam myers m-y-e-r-s m-e-y-e-r-s correct oh say? yeah no i skipped the e you said yeah you skipped the e everyone can you, does people you can have that right without an e uh yeah yeah because so you'll be mayors the original do you know actually fun little side note before Wait, we how even, do you spell your before, surname m-e-y-e-r-s before Isn't we even get mayors? started yeah well you see here's the thing all right this is actually quite interesting oh. um well this is the show where we talk about fun facts it is it is wait i'll tell you exactly what happened so it was to do with the war um it was uh M-Y-E-R-S is the typically Jewish spelling of the name. And uh-huh. so it was changed to avoid further problems. Uh, once where, uh, on my dad's side, family came from Germany. Huh. So like like sort of Jewish Germany. And that they is... changed their name so that they wouldn't be tracked down. Super interesting. My family come from uh, Jewish Lithuania. And my name, I'm sure, was definitely not Whistler a couple of generations ago. But something else. Yeah, dad's side of the family, Jewish. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. Not but, super common with Brits. No, no, it's no, it's not super common. You know, you and I have some definitely have some joint anse- ancestry somewhere. Right? Dude, I did my ancestry. Yeah, As we an- an- ancestry DNA sponsored us. Yeah, like a year ago. And you're like, and oh, I'll use that. I'll do that. Yeah, why not? You spit in a jar and you send it <laughs> off. And I just got an update about my ancestry, and it's like it's exactly what I would expect. I'm like half British and half Eastern European Jew, and. I'm 10 or my my British 10% Irish <laughs> Irish no idea there oh, you go 10% there Irish you go. But, um. but you know that's not actually to do the, when they do that it's not like to do with your blood or actually what you are they use the current data um, from all the people that have submitted in that place at this time exactly so they say right your your DNA is roughly the same as the people that live there currently now exactly which is interesting and this is they. I did this about a year ago maybe two years ago and then yesterday i got a, out of the blue just an update email saying like it's now more accurate because before there was irish wasn't mentioned it was just i was british and uh european jewish well you know i've got a nice little advantage my grandpa is an absolute boss when it comes to this and he has done our family trees back to the 1500s holy shit yes uh, wow. well, like on certain branches like so obviously you yeah can't, you can't really you can't go much further every with every branch yeah. but but yeah on pretty much uh on like sort of the main branches where uh, he's he's gone back to the 1500s and we have a long line of Herculeses. So I'm, I'm sort of, I keep pushing on my wife that one day when we have kids, we're going to have a Hercules. Hercules. Amazing. And uh, yeah, it's not gone down well so, thus far, but uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we get there. Just uh, bring her around. Uh, your phone, I think, might be buzzing. It's not mine. Not mine. No, no, no. Turn it, put it on airplane mode. It's yours for sure. I can oh, hear it buzzing goodness. in my ears. That's it. You see, I, I connect to the Wi-Fi once. Oh, sorry, guys. Airplane mode. There you go. That'll be its final buzz. We're safe. We're safe. This is crazy. It's like an How many episodes have we done? On... And I can't believe that hasn't buzzed so far. Like well, I've always left it over there. <laughs> wow. The first time ah, ever. I, I was setting up my Twitter, wasn't I? So it's I... pointing to the hallway. Okay. Um, this this intro banter has gone on. Let's talk about fake Eiffel Towers. <laughs> All right. I've seen <laughs> three Eiffel Towers in my life. Yeah. Uh, I saw I've, I saw the real one when I, was, when I was 11 and I saw it again about a couple of months ago I was in Paris pretty isn't it it's big and pretty very pretty uh, I, I think it's pretty no it's gothic no it's not gothic um, it's dramatic it's dramatic dramatic would be right I think it's pretty because pop culture has taught me that it's pretty for my whole life it's quite ugly um, <laughs> like objectively it's it's a brown tower made of steel iron not sure um anyway so there's 
a whole Wikipedia page about Eiffel Tower replicas and derivatives. And there are ones that were like... That, well, this kind of Wikipedia page, it's a bit of a... <laughs> this Wikipedia page, total scam. But... <laughs> Because they include ones that are kind of like inspired by the Eiffel Tower. So the one at the top, just Sam, I'm so blind. Yeah, Zoom no, no, that. sorry, it's it's this is a tricky. And scroll left. Scroll left. Here we Watkins go. Watkins right, Tower, right? Watkins so Tower. this was planned to be built in Wembley, which is like Greater London. Planned in 1891, but then it wasn't finished, and it was demolished in 1907. And it kind of looks like a narrower, pointy Eiffel Tower, which was going to be the same size as the Eiffel Tower, built around the same town time. They were going to call it like the Great tower or something uh, it's not on this page i was exploring tower, no? deep uh they i think it, that was that was what Watkins it was called tower, it, yeah. or the guy was hoping it would become like the great tower of london and no, they never finished it but it was going to be as big as the eiffel tower um and then there's some other ones which are like they call them full scale but they look nothing like the eiffel tower no no they're, they're definitely inspired there is a sort of a lattice effect that's been uh, like a lattice triangular pyramidal like uh sort of shape but but what I what I really wanted to get into yeah. is the actual fake ones. Okay, where it's like uh, Vegas. Vegas. You've been to Vegas. Been You've to been Vegas. everywhere. Man. That's a, uh, that's yeah. That, that's actually quite impressive. Vegas is impressive for that. That you walk down the road and at one point you're in Venice. Mm. The next point you're in Paris. For sure. Uh, but yeah. And you know it's a, it's only a third uh, half scale. Half scale. Half scale. Okay. Wait, and it's big. And I so that's the second one I've seen, and you've seen that one as well. Mm -hmm. Then two years ago, I went to China, Oy. and I went to fake Paris, where not only have they got there it is. Shenzhen in there China, it is. it's one third scale. So click on that. So it's a it's a proper replica. I really thought it was half scale, but it's it's big. And I've been there, dude. When I was here, it was like it was forty degrees Celsius. It's like one hundred and ten Fahrenheit. It was absolutely brutal. Um, but not only have they faked this Eiffel Tower, they faked the Champs Elysees. There's like it's it's a whole fake French city. Like it's supposed to be Paris and whatever, and there's all these buildings and all these things, and it's like it's really bizarre. I had some photos, but like, I didn't get it to work. China's <laughs> big on that. In fact, I'm sorry, uh, all of Asia's all of Asia's big on that, like doing sort of fake cities and things like nah, that. China's like, the big boy. On China's this, right? the big boy. Yeah, and um, I went to Thames Town, which is fake London. It's what, like a whole town. What's just... there? What's the, what's there in Thames Town? British buildings. They they look British. And inside of them? Yeah. Really? Dude, you it's, walk in its pub. It's like a movie set. There's like a bit of vomit on the floor and 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 it smells of old beer. Nah, it's too clean. China's they they it's quite clean. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's how you know you're in an authentic English pub is the the, the smell of ale yeah. that just can't can't leave the carpets. And it's broken as well, like but in a different way to Britain. Like in Britain, I feel like the old pub would be broken and it'd be like, because the door doesn't shut right, you know, because yeah. it's a 500 years old. Yeah. And here it's just, oh, and I also went to see a French, a fake French chateau. And it looks, you know, from the outside, you're like, whoa. And same with Thames Town or the fake Paris. You're like, whoa, it looks so real. But then you get up close and you start seeing all the problems. Like it looks like it's made out of stone but there's a big chunk missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely hollow. And inside it's just, you know, it's, uh, it's polystyrene. Uh, not polystyrene. Not polystyrene. No, it's like a reinforced concrete or whatever. Yeah. And then I look in this hole. There's a giant ass bees nest in there. Oh <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, but there's anyway. There's and lots of fake Chinese stuff. Chinese bees kill you. Oh goodness. But well, just basically, the Eiffel Tower is not as unique as you think. There's a ton of uh, fake ones. There's that one in in Mexico. There's one in Mexico, which is one sixth scale. But now we're getting to ones that are like you know, because one sixth is a big difference between a third or a half, and these are kind of just for fun. Like, well, but it's actually called Eiffel Tower, and there's Eiffel Tower in Romania. But I think yeah, like you say, these are in sort of like, uh, like more theme toy, parks yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's the Petrin ta the Petrin Tower in uh, in Prague as well, which is they really count that as a version of the Eiffel Tower. It's completely different. It's completely different, but um nice fun fact. It's got the it's got the interesting stairs designed by Da Vinci. Really? Not Da Vinci. The double not, helix not stairs. The double helix stairs. Was that Da Vinci? Uh Galileo. The people Galileo. who came up with DNA helix. or the double helix. Yeah. No, I th anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um but yeah, so it's got that. So you'll never meet someone coming down if you're going yes, up. Yes. It's clever. Very clever. Um double helix. Double helix. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. There's okay. lots of fake Eiffel Towers. 
I'd like I'd go see some more of these. I'm surprised there's not one in Russia. Why? They like to do big things. Have you seen the big um, oh, who's, who's Genghis Khan? The big Genghis Khan statue? No. Oh, what? Where is it? No. In Russia? You must have seen Maybe it. Maybe I have. Mongolia, I'll probably Mongolia. see it. Uh, of course it'd be Mongolia. Genghis Khan. How do you spell Genghis Khan? Khan. K-H-A-N. Statue. It's humongous. Right. All right, here we go. Ooh. All right, let's try and get one where there's people. Oh, I have seen the statue. Of course Look I've seen the statue. That. That is absolutely massive. It's humongous. Oh my god! Just, what is that made out of? Pure gold. <laughs> no, it's uh, I don't know what that is. It's, Genghis Khan. That is huge. But like, it's I, I just find like sort of ex-Soviet countries and all these sort of like R- Russia and China, for example, uh, they have big things. They have big hotels, big places. Not don't do it small. They don't do it small. They go big or go home. What's up next? Well, actually, I was linked to that. Uh, I just wanted to wanted Ooh. to add into this. Oh, we got a Sam item, up. Eiffel oh, Tower. Yeah, yeah, a little cheeky Eiffel. Oh, I know this one you about know this the. One. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it now because I read the you read notes, it. but <laughs> I knew it before. It was yeah. only supposed to be temporary, right? It was only supposed to be up for twenty years, and it was it was it was um, built for the Expo, yeah, for the World Expo. And uh, basically, everyone hated it. Everyone thought it was really, really ugly. And it kind of right, yeah, it, it is. And um, Nice little side note. Did you know there's a little office up in up in the top? Uh, it, it was uh, Eiffel. Eiffel used to have his um. What was his name? Gustav Eiffel used to have his little office up at the top no, of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, up here, like, this is it. Um, so uh, that's a what? reconstruction, but it is actually there. Uh, so there's. I've not- never been up it. I I, well, I've been, I I went halfway up it. That's a bit half-assed. Isn't I it? know it's yeah. a stupid. It's wet. Have you been up it? No. <laughs> you've, you've been to Paris. You've been seen to it. Paris. I lay underneath it. Got very badly burnt. Fell asleep. Oh wow! And uh, it was like you say. It was about thirty degrees, like like um, Celsius, and it was. I fell asleep for about two hours. Uh, I was my hu- my I was forty degrees. I wasn't in Paris. That was when I was uh, in the fake in one. <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, it was on a school trip when I was eleven. We went to Paris. Nice and uh, romantic. <laughs> it was great um, and then we went up the Eiffel Tower but I think the school only paid for us to go up halfway because you can go to like the first yeah there's the, observ- like the observation deck isn't yeah. there and, then- and I'm like who goes halfway up the Eiffel Tower I'm sure like if you asked our parents whether we could go all the way up they'd spring for the extra 10 euros or whatever it is did you take the stairs or the lift uh, I took the lift the lift oh. yeah. I don't think you're going to get a bunch of 11 year olds to go up the stairs possibly not but basically, what 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 happened was that it was supposed to only be there for the expo, and it yeah. was it was then supposed to be up for twenty years. And Gustav Eiffel was sort of devastated that this baby of his was going to have to be torn down, and uh, he kept trying to find ways to keep it going. So yeah. he he offered it out for loads of scientific research and broadcasting and things like that. Turn it into a giant Tesla coil. Well, pretty much. And then he. he like he realized shit it really is going to be pulled down and uh he realized the only way that he could he could get um he could keep it would be to stick an, ant- an antenna on the top and he put an antenna on the top and the it was such high quality uh it was used for um what's it called wireless w- uh, wireless connection uh for the first time and um and it was such good quality connection that they literally couldn't pull it down. They were like, this is the best connection we've ever had. Amazing. So, yeah, but it was just a nice a nice little side note as to why we still have the Eiffel Tower. And of course, it's then grown into the, into the skyscape. Now you couldn't get rid of it. You couldn't get rid of it. That's it. It's become part of what Paris is. Yeah. So, yeah. Dude, just before we leave this one, don't close that tab. Okay. Click on that prices. I want to know how much it costs to go up the Eiffel Tower. I'm uh, just super curious top? about uh, right at the top. Uh, prices and times prices on the left. Times. I just want to know I'm how much this say costs. I'm going to say 50 bucks. Uh, $50. Uh, I'm not going to look. Uh, to go all the way up? Uh, yeah, I would say 50 euro. All right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So are we Let's saying, say 45 all the way up. Are we saying with ticket, li- uh, sorry, access to the lift? Or yeah, walking? using the lift, 45 euros up and down. Well, this makes me feel really cheap that when I went there, I didn't go up. Um, it's 16 euros? 16 euros with a lift, 10 euros without. Oh, no, that's only to the second floor, though. 25 euros, 50. To the top, 25, 25 euros, which wow. is not very much. Wow, it's a lot cheaper than I expected. Much cheaper than I expected. Normally, when I guess, I have to say I did inflate my guess because I always assume this touristy shit's going to be way more expensive than I want. You know, I took some friends around London and- my God, everything is so expensive. No, my, dude. Like, if you do like the like the loop, the things like the London Eye and 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 uh, what's, what's the wax museum, the uh, uh, Madame, Madame Two Swords. Swords and all that. But screw all this stuff. <laughs> There's so much good free stuff. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum, it's free. I love London's museums. Dude. Like, they are so good. The British Museum. Yeah, British Museum. 
It's free. It's you can't believe like in that British Museum and the Natural History Museum, you see things that you will never see no, anywhere else. They are one of a kind. One of a kind. There's the goddamn Stolen. Rosetta Stone. <laughs> exactly. Like, like you see like old like mummies and samurai armor and everything is just all there. Like and I, stolen straight from the originals, you know, <laughs> like straight away, you know. And I don't want to say it's free. Donate because you, if you can, if you can afford it, if put, you can afford it, put yeah. ten quid in in the thing or twenty quid or whatever, if you can. Um, but, but that's a free full if you're day a, of if, fun. If you don't have money, if you're a student, like I lived in London for a year when I was a student, and it was awesome. Like shit's expensive, especially if you don't live there because you don't know which restaurants have the deals on whatever nights. Yes, yeah. and and if you don't have a student card, <laughs> like which gives you discounts, but. Visiting London, I always felt, yeah, accommodation's pretty expensive. Restaurants are pretty expensive. Um, travel's expensive. Travel's expensive. You know, I got an overnight bus from Prague to London, and I paid more to get home. So that's 15 hours in a bus. Yeah. I paid more to oh, get home from London, London back home to where I live, to the village where I live, than I paid to get from Prague to London. Yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. And underground's really expensive, even if you've got an Oyster card. Even with an Oyster, yeah, up to um, £10 a day, is that £12? is it just uh 15 maybe uh, yeah and anyway um yeah well, if you go to london the so many not all the museums but a lot of them are for free it's fucking great yeah uh, just, just a quick hint a quick a quick london hint yeah uh, go and to the london eye is not all that go to the national what's the tate modern is free as well tate modern's free what's the big one at the top of trafalgar square natural you know what i mean you know what i mean the oh god damn oh this is bad. We are bad English people. Uh, it's not the British Museum for it's not sure. The British, no, it's the Art Museum. The yeah. National, National Gallery. Gallery. National yes, Gallery. National Gallery. Wow. There's a that big, took some time. That did. The National... Because <laughs> um, in the National Gallery, there's a very famous charcoal painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, charcoal by Leonardo da Vinci. And it's amazing. Go see it. It's one of those sort of things that you look at it and go, wow, that dude... He did this stuff. Uh, like he did good stuff. Like this, it really is amazing. Crack on, Sam. What's yeah. next? Right. Sorry. Here we go. Let's keep going. Super Sorry, scary apologize. zombie ants. That was ants. me taking us for a tour around London's free actions. <sighs> Super Enjoy scary it. zombie ants. I, I feel like this one's been done a lot, but it's. I stumbled across it while finding topics for this week, and I couldn't leave it. It's too good. It's, do you it's, know this? It's solid. I do know this. I've even seen the footage, and it is terrifying. It's terrifying. Do you want to f load up a video of that? Yeah, let's get a video. Yeah. Uh, I'll just. So basically, it's this oh, parasitic fungus that. Uh, oh, is no, don't do it here. This will be a terrible player. Load up YouTube and find a thing, because this the, the the player on that site. I saw it when I was researching. You have to watch a thirty second non skippable ad. Oh god. No. Oh no, god. Just no. Right. <clears throat> Ant fungus. Um, so basically this fungus, this parasitic fungus, it gets, it infects the ants and then it basically makes them wander away from their nest, high, n nest, uh, nest, nest, yeah. ants nest. <clears throat> oh yeah, you've got to watch five seconds of ads. That's fine, don't, play mind that. That. don't mind that. Um, and then you get, <clears throat> it goes away, then it bites into like a, the stem of a plant and then this fungus grows this crazy thing out of its head. Let's play that video. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, leave it on mute so we don't get claimed. Oh, yeah. Um, and skip ahead. Skip ahead. Here we go. Yeah, get to the part where it grows out of his head. Yeah, where are you growing? Come on. Okay, right, so, so... There's a scary looking ant. He's covered in hairs. Yeah. And now... He's got infected. He's oh, got he's going to... This is incredible and footage. Basically, as far as I understand, it goes into their brain. No! This is the this is the crazy thing, dude. Okay, well, so it's going to bite into All it. Right. I'll get into that in he's a sec. I really around. wanted to get into that. He's flicking around. He, he, looks, he looks perturbed. Um... There's definitely something going on. Hang on, he's so he's he's, he's flailing. Skip ahead. I'm skipping, National I'm Geo skipping. needs to get. Come on, I love <laughs> National <laughs> Geographic. Skip, 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 skip. Oh, no, oh we missed okay. it now. We missed okay, it. Okay, just Here we go. go back. Okay, so he's bitten into the thing, and in time lapse, there's like what looks like. Just stop it a sec. So basically, he died. It looks like a protruding orifice. I'm not sure if he's dead at this. Oh no, he is dead when it starts. To oh, he's dead. Right, like, yeah. he's dead. Oh, he's dead. But so it's bitten into this thing and then what looks like a kind of like a, a vine is growing out of his yeah. out of the it's back like, of it's his like head a shoot yeah let's go, go on play it play right, it some we'll more play it. now it's growing and growing grow skip ahead skip ahead this time lapse is not time lapsed enough well, I should have done 30 seconds oh my goodness all right here we go so it's got really quite big and then this weird bulb thing grows on top of it has what have I, have I? Yeah, you've skipped ahead too oh, far. Oh, but anyway, this weird bolt. Oh no, there it is. There's another oh. example. Anyway, it, 
it's just super weird. This bulb thing grows and then it releases all these fungal spores all around, which infect more ants, and then they go out and do the whole thing again. And it's just basically this ant the, it gets infected and then it's just driven like it's not doing this on its own accord it's driven to go and permanently bite into the stem of a plant and then a fungus grows out of its head and to be in a place where there are more ants as well i think is part of it it's um fascinatingly where there are more ants but also not too many because they don't want the whole high uh, nest to become infected and then reduce the amount of uh generations that can go forward and can evolve clever crazy right i love nature it's incredible <laughs> i just love nature so you mentioned that thing about the brain and yeah. how it's got to be controlling its brain yeah and i was like yeah obviously it's getting into the brain because it's telling it to go and bite onto this thing no no they've taken these ants that have been infected with it and they've done some like probably not brain scans but they've looked at what's infected like where the fungus is in the body it's not in the brain so the brain of the ant is unaffected but somehow this fungus is controlling these ants to go and do all these crazy things. And you know what? They, Works. They don't know how. No. What? It's work in progress. What? They still haven't figured out why the crazy ants, even though their brains seem to be totally fine, go and do all these things. And that just makes it even more terrifying because they're trapped in their... Are they, do you think... I mean, they're ants. They're not really going to have a ton of consciousness going on. Yeah. But they're trapped in their ant bodies and their brains are okay. And yet they're, it would be like you and me being in our minds, but our bodies like, just yeah. going and doing some crazy shit without our permission. I like how... Uh, the, so the professional that's been given their opinion on this uh, has used the quote, it's almost like a chronic cold. Uh, I feel that's an understatement. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I tell you what... <laughs> I'll 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 get a flu shot if that's what colds are like. <laughs> no, I, got, I got an advert from my doctor the other day to come and get my flu shot. Have you ever had a flu shot? I've never had a flu shot. That's um, a bit unnecessary. I, I think at my age, definitely unnecessary. But it's because they always say they expect so, you to get a mild flu once you get your flu shot. Well, uh, you get like a little reaction to it. Yeah, maybe. Which, which again, another amazing thing, uh, vaccination. Oh, but yeah. it's uh, no, it's 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 incredible because I I I had what did I have? I got. I got vaccinated against tick-borne diseases. Oh, you did? I haven't done that. Yeah, no, I've done it because there's quite a lot of them here. Yeah. And um, and I did for about three days feel really not very well. And mm. it was I've never really had it before. I've done all the tropical ones. Yeah, and, I've never had it. And I felt really not great. I was like, oh, this is a this is a harsh disease. This you know, well, oh, tick-borne encephalitis. Uh, yeah, and Lyme's disease. Yeah, it's brutal. Encephalitis, yeah. And it could be permanent. You can have permanent damage from that disease. Yeah. I think my dad got it in Turkey. Did he? But he was all right. Do you know one of those ones that I always thought you can never recover from? Actually, you can. Is malaria? Oh yeah, you can get malaria multiple times. Loads of times. Yeah. yeah. Or, or but Henry, bringing Henry, up my dad with his diseases twice. I'm pretty sure he's had malaria. <laughs> Henry VIII had chronic malaria, I believe. Yeah, and it comes back. That's it is a chronic disease. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it doesn't. Horrible. You know, back up your quinine. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. What have we got next? Um, <clears throat> dude. Oh, this will be great. This is going to be. This is totally self-satisfying oh. because recently I was, I think I was talking with my wife about it yesterday. Like, I really want to do one of those zero G flights, but it's like five grand. Um, so cool I'm like, I, I've, I've slowly mentioned to her that this is something I'd really like to do at some point. We're so, so pushing her towards the acceptability of me spending 5,000 pounds <laughs> at some point in my life on like 30 seconds of zero G. <laughs> well, go big or go home. Oh, uh, you know. Let's see, see how it goes. Um, so I was researching this, and then I thought this would be a perfect topic for the podcast, but specifically about movies. Because I saw a few months ago, um, it's not the first one on here, just just stay on the notes page for yeah. a second, because there's a bunch of things here. So the overall concept is the Vomit Comet, which is like if you wanted to do a zero-G flight where you spend your 5000 it's so expensive. <laughs> it's just a plane. It's just it just a goes up plane and to down. Do <laughs> um and there was uh so it's called the vomit comet because it makes you incredibly seasick a lot of people sick, a lot of people sick. um yeah sick yeah. Yeah. and i do i i suffer from not plane sickness but boats man what is it motion sickness? whenever i'm on my mega yacht i guess <laughs> really do, do you get do you get motion sickness? only only sometimes but like on rough seas yeah i'll, I'll throw up for sure do you know it's the one place where i readily take a pill i'm i'm, I'm not yeah. really a big i'm not a big medicine taker those Travel sickness pills are rough, though. They really funk me out. Do they? Yeah. I, I mean, as in like, the Kinadrill? Do you know Kinadrill? Things like sea sickness tablets generally work. I remember I went on a boat trip once, and we were all really ill. It was really bad. It was that sort of steady, sort of just 
Yeah. And we just eat. We just eaten lunch, and um, <laughs> and I remember sitting there going, "I'm going to be really sick. This is bad." Yeah. Sorry, listeners. This is gross. But um, but I thought, you know what? I'm just. I'll take a pill and we'll see if it helps. I, know, I don't take a pill for anything. Like even if I'm, only if I'm dying of a massive hangover, that's the only time I'll take a pill. <laughs> Self-inflicted damage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're an idiot, Sam. Yeah. Have a pill. But, um, but yeah, and I took one and 10 minutes later, absolutely fine. And so from this, from that day forward, I, I literally preach seasickness pills. Like I, I wouldn't go on a, on a boat adventure without one. Cool. I, I would, yeah, no, thoroughly recommend it. Um, I got seasick once or twice, like really terror like this, you know, throwing up everywhere where everywhere. a friend of mine's parents had a boat and we went, we crossed the, the channel on this boat. And it was quite, the seas were wow. quite rough and the boat like bounces. So it like, goes over a wave. Right. Mm. And then it's like, yeah. it's quite hard. eh? Yeah. 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 So, it, you know, you're doing this and you really, you know, you'll be feeling this on the boat. And so we went like below deck and like, there's like the, living room area or whatever and if you time it just right you jump up and then as the boat's cresting over the wave and then the boat enters free fall wow we're really bringing this back to ah, zero g <laughs> and i think this is why it makes why it makes you sick like the same principle and as it fought the boat falls down you have a moment in the air so you jump up and then you're like whoop <laughs> and then as the boat goes down you're slammed into the ground Ooh. so we'd jump up You'd have this moment in the air and then you'd be slammed into the sofa. And we did this, we were like 12 years old. We did this for an hour, however long it takes to grow up, maybe not an hour. And then I was minutes, and yeah. then I was fine, I was fine, I was fine. And then I was <laughs> I, fortunately I was I was above deck, but I threw up all the way down the side of this boat. Nice. <laughs> well, at least you're out, at least you're on a boat. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Bucket it off. Uh. Um anyway, so yeah, people get sick on this boat. I'm uh, on this on this boat on, this, on the uh, vomit comet, vomit comet the which vomit is comet. a modified plane which they fly up in like these ellipses so it goes up and then you have like a lot of gravity as it climbs it climbs it climbs and then they just drop it out of the sky and obviously if you're in a falling if you're in free fall you are weightless so you're inside yeah. this plane free falling in weightlessness which is exceptionally cool but what is even cooler is when they use it for movies oh and i've got one we can add oh um we'll do it in a second Click on Apollo 13. Yeah. The Apollo 13 uh, link. This one. Yeah, this was a PDF. I don't oh, know how I found this. Nice. Not many um, of those go around anymore. The cast and uh, for this is for Apollo 13, the the movie with Tom Hanks and crew. Um the cast and crew because they wanted to do zero gravity, super effective. And this was like in the 90s. Yeah. The cast and crew flew between 500 and 600 parabolic arcs in NASA's KC 135 airplane the vomit comet to achieve real weightlessness each gark got them 23 seconds of gravity and they did it in 13 days so basically they pumped out a movie in 13 days of only weightlessness. the weightless scenes only the way and they're they're not all you know they'll cleverly do it so they'll be in the ship but they won't be, you know they'll be strapped in or whatever yeah, yeah. but where they're like drinking water and stuff and you know messing around all of it real weightlessness which is incredible yeah. this is just I have such this movie making is just m amazing. I love movie making, sort of behind the scenes movie making stuff. I and love they're building stuff. sets inside this vomit comet. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's yeah. I, I mean, I also am part of that list of people that would love to try the vomit comet. But is it not exactly the same as doing a free fall? Uh, no, because like in a free fall, dive. you're like you're falling towards the earth. There's tons of winds and. I suppose because then they land safely back down, don't they? On the arc, they do like a sort of. It's like a big S in the sky, isn't it? It's like a yeah, big... yeah, yeah. And also importantly, the the wi you, there's no wind movements, yeah, and it's pressurized and all of this stuff. So you are, it's still, it's like you're in a room, just weightless. Ah, cool. Which is cool. Very cool. And I suppose yeah, because it arcs off, you slowly land back down. At least you hope you don't just crash yeah. back down to the floor. <laughs> yes, you assume so. Um. So this was good. And then much more recently, just go back to the, I don't think there's anything super interesting here. It just explains like the parabolic. Oh, wait, wait, go back to that. Oh, oh. Zoom in on that thing on the right. Yeah. So for our video watchers rather than our audio listeners, this is just a, a graph showing the, the parabolic. So basically um, they hit a 45 degree nose high and then they straighten out and then they drop up into a 45 degree nose low. Which a 45 degree climb 
That's pretty is steep. Intense. Pretty steep. Yeah. So I think this would be a bit of a kick of doing one of these flights as well. Like a 45 up going, would be. Oy. Yeah. Like oh, I, dude, I, remember, another thing? I remember once I did. I, sorry, I was just no, going to go for it. I was just going to jump in and say I remember once I did fly one of those little planes and like one of the little Cessna things, and I had like an old sort of RAF pilot was with with with, with me, and he liked to do all the aerobatics and stuff like that, and he, he kept doing these these sort of parabolic flight things, and you can do it in a little plane, but you don't get that 25 seconds of wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get sort of three seconds of going. <laughs> there's that video on youtube of people's a guy's got a dog in his plane and he's doing this and the dog's like free float just floating around <laughs> in the back and then uh yeah so go back to the notes let's talk about the mummy yeah and let's talk about tom cruise, tom cruise who is crazy like with all this scientology and he's got like you know he seems to be a bit weird but he's also a legend he gave it up didn't he his kid was ill so he gave up scientology what yeah i think so really yeah i think so I, I don't, don't Google it. Google don't take it. my word. No, I got to know. Is Tom Cruise a Scientologist? Is Tom Cruise still? Oh yeah. A Scientologist. Oh god, I'm gonna kill that. Scientologist. This I just have to know. I know this is not prepared, but uh, involved through his first wife many words. Uh, former scientist says this is how Tom Cruise can't switch. Can't. This is all from last year, though. Ex Scientologist says no. He's, he's he's still a Scientologist. Um. It doesn't matter. This isn't about Scientology. This isn't about that side of Tom Cruise. This is about the side of Tom Cruise that is completely legendary. Badass. Zoom in on this article. For, this is from Variety. So, yeah. It, the first paragraph is four words. Tom Cruise <laughs> is committed. He uh, just is at everything he does. Oh, all his stunts, everything. And he's, he's like 50. For a plane crash sequence in The Mummy, the actor's upcoming monster movie, Cruise did 64 takes in zero gravity. Yeah. Two days to shoot four high altitude flights. The filmmaker said during a blah, 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 blah. There was a lot of throwing up. A lot of throwing up. Apparently yeah. Tom Cruise, I read this before, so we don't need to go through every single thing. They said yeah, he, he did, did not, not throw off. Up. Everyone else was throwing up. Tom Cruise is like, I can take it. <laughs> I'm, Thanks I, for doing this, I just, guys. I just hold it in. Yeah, and he was super supportive of everyone and all of this stuff. And this is what's so... This. Look at this. I was happy to have Tom on hand and to hold back, back hair, hair if, if needed. needed. <laughs> just, I, I'll say something. Just but load up the mummy zero gravity scene and we'll watch it without sound so we don't get claimed um or we'll watch watch bits of it uh, but they built this this whole set inside of this zero gravity plane it's there was a great making of and all of this stuff but there was another one he did where he did a uh he did a, a free fall from a super high like a halo jump which is where you do like a high altitude, low something, low orbit. Low orbit, yeah. Where okay. you're jumping from a really, I think that's what Halo stands for, I'm not sure. Where you jump from a really high height with like a special breathing mask on and everything. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And they did this scene where he jumps out and it could have been faked. They could have done it with green screen and wires and all of this stuff. But, oh, this is, but, but he did it for real, the Halo jump. Isn't this incredible? Just Hang we're on. watching the video and it's just him flying oh, around it's, it's, it's just inside there. forward to him. Look at that. Chapeau. Just flying around. And all of this stuff could have been faked, but they didn't. Well, he never fakes his, anything. So cool. Did, did you hear the thing about he was flying? He, he was sort of illegally flying helicopters for years. And then he wanted to do a stunt in the most recent uh, Mission Impossible. And... He was like, they were like, you have to have your license. And so he went and quickly did his license. And then he, you can see. They <laughs> how were, quick can you do a helicopter well, license? He said he already knew how to fly it. So he'd been flying it for years. And uh, and so he, he went and quickly got his helicopter license. And then within literally the first day of filming, they were doing a, a like a 10, a, a 10 meter apart, two helicopters chasing each other scene where they were literally, it was like one wrong move and you're dead. And apparently Henry Cavill was uh, the guy that played Superman and was also the bad guy in um in the in the most recent mission impossible he was he was like right well this is how it goes yeah. <laughs> it's like, at least i'm with tom cruise at least i'll make the play i'll make, I'll make the papers <laughs> incredible <laughs> but no it's i actually i wanted to add something about tom cruise's uh committedness legend uh, he, like he's unbelievable and you know like he, he was completely different um like thing but when he he did uh what was the film the singing one rock of ages he did rock of he played a rock star and he sang all his own i don't even know that movie yeah oh god he he sang all the def leppard songs and um youtube it man bring it up <laughs> his... i i just want to see tom cruise do legendary things and i i 
It's because, I mean, these aren't, I don't believe these are movies from his production company or however. He's just the star. He's the star. But he's yeah. such a big name that they're like, Tom, we don't we don't need to do the Halo flight. We can do it on a soundstage with green screen. And he's like, we're doing it. We're doing it. I want to do it. Well, and the, they're there like, okay, Tom. That, well, that was, that was. Because you're Tom Cruise. There was the one, this one here, where, where he was on the outside of the oh, airplane. Such a good scene. And I love these new Mission Impossible movies. That could easily, that could easily have been faked. Easily. But it, but it wasn't. Just holding onto the outside of a plane. And they said, they said, what's like, what were the biggest concerns? Was it letting go? And he's like, no, no, that, that was fine. Like I was attached on. The biggest problems were birds. Uh, particles in the air getting hit by like a bee or something like because it would kill me and and then he said it was a bit cold i only had a jacket on and we were like i was incredible like, tom did you not think of putting some some like tight fitting warm clothes on he's like no <laughs> <laughs> but you, so you wanted to see him in rock of ages i just yeah? want to hear him sing rock of ages it's definitely there you go um no de- uh, uh, tom cruise here you go because definitely because rock of ages was, uh, was a okay. song i don't know this i don't know any Def Leppard. i mean i'm sure uh, i do but i don't know that so we'll do pour some sugar on me here we go it's a classic song. oh i know this song okay i do know Def Leppard. Pour some sugar on me. skip this ad i gotta log in with my premium account because this is here we go all right get that sound going so or skip ahead yeah don't do too long otherwise we'll get Beautiful. Then we'll skip forward to when he gets into the high bits. This is pretty cool. Just stop it, otherwise we will get there you some go. claims. But, but no, really cool. Like he's and he really sang that, and it's he, he literally he got the part, and he was like a month he'd been training to sing. And he went on and performed that live, like, like oh. of course, of course, he performed it in the in the vocal in like the vocal booth as well. But he went and did that like live, and like performed it and sang it and everything. Seriously. And the singer of Def Leppard uh, said, "Like that's amazing, Tom. Like I've been singing for years, and this is a hard song for me to sing. You come in like a month, learn how to sing, like absolutely mental." Wait, what's that other one? You've got? Oh, did you not see this one? No, I don't know. This. He broke his ankle jumping. All right, so. I'm sure this has done its rounds on the internet. I'm sure is he going to be running like this? So he's always chopping his hands. Always, of course, of course. So this is. Oh, he's chopping his hands. Watch this. Watch this. All right. So I'll cut the sound. All right. So basically, he's jumping between oh, wait, two pause buildings. It, pause it. Pause it. This is like a behind the scenes shoot. This is a behind wires, the scenes. Wires attached. Yeah. So wires attached. So this is behind the scenes. Basically, what happened is they're doing a jump between two buildings. Now he is attached to wires so that he doesn't fall off the building. Yeah. Uh, but he um, he misplaced his foot on the jump and he broke his ankle. And the most beautiful part of this is that he didn't give up on the on the on the he stunt. He just keeps going. He keeps going. He got up and he ran on the ankle. Oh, I gotta see this. <laughs> all right. So just you all right. This is a we're looking at a side on view now uh, of how he um, lands and then oh. or okay, you might not have seen the ankle. So let's it's gonna zoom in for you. Uh, Wait, that looked like quite a hit on. There. Look at this. All right, you ready? Chappelle leg goes backwards and. Oh. They're gonna do one more little, one more look at this. Oof. And you can see him oh, in pain. But look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Gets up and keeps running. <laughs> oh, he stumbled a little bit. Of course, he He's, stumbled. He broke he his broke leg his in half. Leg. But it was, uh, yeah, amazing. He's a machine. That's Absolute impressive. Absolute machine. I love it. Uh, and then, okay, don't click on the gravity one. Okay, so oh, you don't want to go to gravity. Oh, we can go to gravity. Well, okay, okay, click on gravity. Right, well, 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 no, no, no. It's just I feel like I don't know why I put that at the end because it's such a letdown. Because it's like, yeah, they didn't do any vomit comet stuff. They just faked it with like clever camera work. Well, it was clever camera work, but there was a big mistake they made in gravity. Oh, did yeah. you did you not notice everything was floaty? Yeah. Apart from was it Sandra Bullock? Apart from her Sandra hair. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock's hair. Oh, really? Nothing. And her hair didn't float. People's hair in space floats everywhere. It kind of just goes all over the place because there's, there's nothing no holding it down. No gravity. Sure. And I have that problem myself when I go to space. <laughs> Your beard yeah, floats fully everywhere. Fully bald. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you see, I was gonna, I was gonna link from gravity into into space trash. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, did you do you know how much space trash there is in space? There's a lot. There is a lot of there's space. There's that trash. famous picture where it looks. Oh, this, there is the famous one. picture. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is it looks like the Earth is surrounded. Like if you were in space, you wouldn't be able to see the Earth. But obviously, it's an exaggeration because those pieces of junk would be the size of cities. Yeah, well, there, there's that, and there's also the fact that like that's sh- sort of showing how many how many bits and pieces we have in the sky. Hundreds of thousands, right? But millions, uh, millions. I would have thought. Wow. Like, um, uh, what is it? Seventy uh, percent 
sorry, of the known track space in uh, space junk, seventy percent is in low Earth orbit, which extends about one thousand two hundred fifty miles, two thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface. Wow. Um, but hundreds of thousands of man-made man-made objects are zipping around our planet, from dead satellites to er er errant nuts and bolts. Which, if you think about it, is massively dangerous. Like for satellites, imagine just okay, a stray bolt. Is this a problem now, though? I think it is. There was there was a satellite. There was a satellite that was taken out by bolts, um, and also things like because space is big. Shuttles, US, like the the um. Yeah, you're right. If like, even if there's like a small chance, a bolt, a bolt yeah. orbiting the Earth, whizzing and past, whizzing past. Sh wow. Wow. You know, it's uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna recover from one of those going through you. It's, or going no, through that's a ship, for sure. For that matter. But, that's uh, pretty intense. And there's a space station up there. An estimated 500,000 pieces between mm. 0.4 inches and 4 inches across join those larger frank... Uh, sorry, there's 23,000 known, known man-made fragments larger than about 4 inches. And then an extra 500,000 of slightly smaller. Um, but no, it's... Uh, I, I, like, I just find it amazing that this is a problem. We were discussing the other day or um, about junk on the earth but we're already spreading it into space and yeah it's it's, it's amazing because well, I, I always thought that would be the answer to, yeah, to it, junk it, well it would be rocket it away it would be if we can actually get it to escape, uh, escape going. earth's orbit because yeah. you know blast like <laughs> i'm probably going to take some heat for this one but nuclear waste is not really a problem because the idea that we're not going to work out a way to efficiently dispose of nuclear waste in the next half century is a bit silly and there's plenty of ways to safely store it if we, within the next 50 years, let's say we work out a very cheap way of getting things into orbit, however that might be, there'll probably be some technological breakthrough or we'll work out just some way of cheaply Elon doing Elon Musk. It. Elon will save us. <laughs> <laughs> just put it on a spaceship and fly it into the sun because there's... Li it's less far to go than, into, than, than go into galactic. Yeah. yeah, and it's the sun. You know what's, it, you know what's not going to be affecting the sun? Rush. Nuclear waste. <laughs> yeah, just our ship. Just blast it into the sun. Do you know, you say that, and then we'll blast it into the, the sun, sun, and the, the sun, sun will explode. blow up. Yeah. <laughs> be like, ah, oh, shit, we should have seen that one coming. <laughs> How did we not see this yeah. coming? <laughs> God damn it. But, uh, no, um, no, but, no I, I kind of know what you mean. Yeah, it's... This is a problem, though, because this is, like, tightly around the Earth, orbiting where we're trying to put stuff that's super useful to us and there was there's <laughs> somewhere somewhere in this in this article is detailed about two um about two satellites which crashed into each other and they sent off thousands of um, oh, i heard about that yeah thousands of small, uh, small pieces and of course you think of it sort of in isolation like everything like having a satellite there is interesting but you, how many satellites are actually up there? there's thousands of them there's a lot of satellites there's a lot of space though there is a lot of space. It's but there's a, that's five of what, 500,000 pieces of crap floating around? Eventually something's going to hit something. Something's going to hit something and something will break something and then you have to go and replace that something and it's it's just a, a vicious circle of junk. It wasn't in this article. Is this scientific? Where was this? National uh, Geo. National uh, Geo. Yeah. <clears throat> there was, uh, it wasn't here. I, I read about it or maybe I even shit made a video about it. Uh, Possible. There's like the idea of the chain reaction. So like two satellites hit each other and then so you've got two things and then you smash them together and you've got 10,000 things mm -hmm. and then one of those things will hit another satellite and make 10 things and you can have this crazy chain reaction where suddenly Anarchy. you know tons of stuff is destroyed and our cell phones and gps and internet stops working well this is it because there's <laughs> you don't think of it like that you think oh it's a it's a satellite there's like google chain maps reactions, or something man. Like that. but it's all it's is gps it's uh, digital radios everything like that everything is di is digital radio satellites i would have thought so sat satellite I don't even know how it works. <laughs> yeah, I guess it must be because some people call it satellite radio, right? Wasn't it called satellite yeah. radio back in the day? Like you'd have a car, it would have satellite radio. Yeah, like, you had a Ooh. satellite phone. I don't know. I don't know. Satellite phone. Doesn't matter. Doesn't Either matter. way, if all the satellites go away, it's going to be real bad for us. Really bad. So we don't want that. No, it's uh, yeah. No, it, it's. I just thought it was. It was really interesting to sort of look at like this as as a representation. It's. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to have to get like astronaut bin men. <laughs> Maybe not a bad idea. That's like, gonna have to do something about this eventually. Uh, did you hear about that? There was some piece of a, a satellite fell into someone's garden the other day. Really? Yeah, it dropped out. I it, I think it might have been a lad Bible thing. So sounds how, like sounds lad Bible. How accurate it was, I don't know. But um, there was there was a piece of space debris fell and landed in someone's garden, and it was just like it said like space something on no, it. No, it didn't. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. 
Google, I, Google, I, Google. I, I, I will. Know. I will Twitter this once once I find it. All right. Oh, I'll, that's a good. That's a good plug. I'll tweet it at. This is Sam Myers. There you go. There you go. M e y e r s. M e y e r s. True. Got to point that out. Point that out. Uh, this is Sam M e y e r s. There you go. Cool. Very good. Follow Sam. All right. Follow me. Go. I'm at Simon Whistler. If you want to, <laughs> I won't tweet anything interesting. I usually just. I don't even know what I tweet. Well, this is this is kind of my conjecture with Twitter. It's why I haven't had a Twitter thus th- thus far, uh, because I don't really know what to tweet. I tweet about videos I'm making and interesting stuff that I find and stupid things on the internet generally. I suppose. Yeah. That's, well, guys, if you want to be kept up to date with what we've got coming out and what's coming up, that's right. Then make sure you follow us both on Twitter. At this is Sam Myers. Do you want to do another this one? This is Simon Whistler. Well, it looks like you've got another one lined I up. I got another here. one lined up. Click on that. Oh, why is that link not working? Don't worry, the link will work. Cool. Have faith. <laughs> The last one, I've already forgotten what it was about. You just got to have faith. <laughs> Conspiracy 58. Oh, yeah, this is great. So, I, I just before we get started, mockumentaries, right? You know, like, this is Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. This mm. sort of thing. Turn up to 11. I was reading an article. Someone thinks, like, this was the last genre, like, unique genre of film, rather than, like, combining things together that was invented. Okay. Like, the it was a, a whole new thing that no one knew about before. Mm. And someone was like, mockumentary, fake documentary. And I was like, yeah. And I can't think of like other genres that have been made up since then. And I was like, I was like, no, surely there have been. Like, then no. Interesting point. Anyway. Anyway. Conspiracy 58 was one of these mockumentaries made back in 2002 uh, by the Swedish public broadcaster, which I assume is like their BBC. And basically... They didn't tell anyone that this was a mockumentary. <laughs> so they made it. Like, this is Spinal... Oh, this is Spinal Tap. You could watch and you could be like, I guess there's a big man called Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. That's it. As, as a kid, I was sure there was a band called Spinal Tap. They turned they turn it to 11. Yeah, they did. Um, made a video about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Conspiracy 58 is a mockumentary that the Swedish government or broadcaster didn't tell people was a documentary that was basically said... It was, it was all about putting forward the idea that the 1958 FIFA World Cup, which was held in Sweden, was a conspiracy theory. So, Conspiracy 58, obviously standing for the conspiracy of the 1958 FIFA World Cup. Cup, And they were like, no, Sweden didn't have the resources to pull it off at this time. And they had all these fake interviews with all of these people and economists and whoever (laughs) talking about, like, this fake, how it was definitely fake. And... Uh, oh, the TV's going to turn off. Pass me that control, would there you? There we go. There we go. I don't know why that's Save happening. The TV. Press any key to cancel. Okay. Any key. It's like you've been watching too much TV. Let's turn it off. Click the any key. Uh, yeah. Where's the any key? <laughs> There's is no that, any key. Is that Simpsons? Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And basically, this was so convincing, and they didn't tell people. It came out later. But people, it's, they still believe that this is a real conspiracy, and it was actually, you know, Wow, it made that much of an impact. Yeah, it made this much of an impact. And this is the thing with conspiracy theories. Like, one person says something crazy. I mean, this was a setup to, you know, yeah, I imagine whole... prove this point. But one crazy Team. person says something and enough people talk about it and the person's convincing enough, like this whole Area 51 Bob Lazar stuff that's been in the press recently. Mm. And it's like just with one person who's a particularly good liar or makes a particularly compelling documentary and doesn't tell people, and you start this whole thing and it sticks around. I find that very interesting because there's... They're often... This is what kind of conspiracy theories seem to thrive on, is the fact that there is um, the possibility of a different way that something happened. But normally for every single conspiracy theory, there is a very reasonable explanation as to why that happened. Very boring. Yeah, like for, like for instance, the old moon landing uh, flag. Like the, the yeah, flag. Well, why isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. It was Because <laughs> they knew there wouldn't be any wind on the moon. So they were like, if we put wires in it, it'll look like it's blowing. Done. Done. Boring. Bada boom, bada bing. Yeah. Why are there no stars? Because they, you know, when there are bright things, if you take a picture of someone at night with a flash on, you're not going to see the stars behind them, are you? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's always boring, but conspiracy yeah. theories. But it's exciting. It is exciting. It's much more interesting. And it's, I think, I, I, this isn't my conjecture, but the one of the big conjectures about why conspiracy theories are so appealing is because it makes people think we have control. Yep. It makes people think, oh, the government's really powerful. 
where it's like really shit's just random and bad shit happens and terrorists it's like what was it the illuminati oh yeah yeah they control everything where it's like no it's much more complicated than that <laughs> it's way more complicated than that anyway that's conspiracy 58 nice short one have you got some for me uh well i if if you like we can cover the clownfish do it so i just thought this. well was- how are we doing for time Oh, we're fine for time. Here cool. we go. We've got about 10 minutes. Do um, it. So, all right, here we go. Clownfish, such as Nemo, are all born male, but can choose to change sex if it means that they will become the dominant female. Ooh. So... Oh, because they're, they're matriarchal s- structure? Like the women lead the way? Um, The women are in charge? I'm not sure about that, but what it is is basically if they're... If there is the opportunity to become a woman and you'll become the most sort of the Two number one. Two in a row from Nat Geo. Yeah. Delivering yes. content, Nat Geo. Shut up, Siri. What just happened? Siri spoke to us. We wow. Don't, we don't want you. Uh, sometimes that happens when I'm making videos. Yeah. Siri will just be like, hey. Oh, that, that was, uh, that was uh, out of the Did you say field. my name? <laughs> I said Simon. But, uh, no. Simon, I'm so lonely in your phone. <laughs> Fuck off, Siri. <laughs> But basically, uh, what kind of drew me to this was that I heard a scientist speaking about this. And it turns out that in Finding Nemo, because Nemo's mum had died, oh, the dad Melvin, the dad, a would have turned into the woman. That'd be a different story. It would have been a very different story. It'd be a much more 2019 story. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought there was... It was... <laughs> What? <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that just made me chuckle. That, tick- that tickled me. Um, but I mean, I, we don't even really have to have to open it. We will. But uh, I've got it here. Here we go. So here we go. The clownfish. The clownfish. Oh, there it is. It's a nice looking fish. It is a pretty fish, actually. It's one of the only. Uh, it's the only anemone fish. Um, so the actually there is a slight difference the anemone fish and the clownfish are not exactly the same but, okay. but the obviously the anemone is poisonous to most fish and so the clownfish can lives uh, or the anemone fish can live in a sort of beautiful coexisting environment they live inside of the anemone it's mm-hmm. really beautiful actually if you ever see them in the wild how they sort of dip in and out of the hole and everything like that it's really nice um and yeah and so basically the clownfish um Yep, simple as that. The clownfish can become female uh, if... Hang on, where is it? Where is it? Change of sex. Surprisingly, all, clown, all clownfish are born male. They have the ability to switch sex, but will only do so to become the dominant female of a group. The change is irreversible. Oh, you got to commit. you got to commit. you got to know what you're doing. I feel uh, it's the same way if uh, you have a sex change as a man. That's not coming back. Not coming back. Don't you got to be sure? You're not folding it under. No, you're putting it away. No, it's uh, and so gender gender change can also be seen in the uh, the Asian sheep's head ras. Oh, what's a ras? A ras. It's a big fish. Oh. Uh, a big old fish. Uh, Asian. Do any non fish change sheep's change gender? Head. Yes, they do. Uh, is that the ras? Here it is. Oh, there we go. He's huge. So. Oh, it's right. markedly less good looking. No, yeah, exactly. It's so got hang, a, if we do this, like male. Yeah, so viewers at home just to describe it's a fish with a giant bulb bu- growing out of its forehead. forehead. Yeah, and it's really ugly. It's, 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 it's got like massive sort of Angelina Jolie lips with <laughs> weird crazy teeth. Big, big ugly teeth. Uh, like sort of it's got like three front teeth, very sharp. And um it looks almost human, if you will. Um, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. It looks like it's got like a big nose or something. Um, and then basically, the male ras can it sort of disappears under a rock for a while, and then it will come back as a female Asian sheep's head ras, uh, which looks completely different. Not here, but uh, this Whoa, one. Whoa, that's a female. Yeah. Oh wow, it's it looks like a regular fish. I think it might go the other way round. Actually, I think it. <laughs> I'm gonna think that I think they're all born female, and they can turn. And male. then they can turn male. Well, um, and. Wow. David Attenborough covered this beautifully uh, on, I can't remember exactly. Legend. Was, but uh, yeah, it was amazing. So there was the bearded dragon can change. Oh. Right, this is a, a slight caveat. The bearded dragon can change oh. to the female in egg. In, in, in egg I've form, heard about this. Depending on the temperature. ambient temperature. So if it's above 31 degrees, then they're going to change into female, huh. which is interesting. Uh this one's interesting. It's nice. It's not actually a gender change, but small male giant Australian cuttlefish often assume the colors and appearance of being female 
as a masking device to get close to their mate instead of choosing to be male and fight off the larger males. Uh, <laughs> so I've I've got a little clip here. Here we go. Um, all right, here we go. So basically, cuttlefish. I don't know if anyone. I hopefully everyone knows what a cuttlefish is. It's a very strange. Love it. Well, no. should this we, is. Should we get out of here, Simon? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's call it a day. Ah, uh, this has been Simon Wister's show. Sam Myers with an official Twitter account. Where do we find you? Third time this episode, dude. Now you've got it. I can't <laughs> stop. Is, yeah, no. So this is Sam Myers. M E Y E R S. You can follow me at Simon Whistler. Simple, spelt like it sounds. And we'd like to hear from you. Write to us if you've got anything you'd like to share. SWPodcast at gmail.com. We are bouncing off each other with these plugs. We're getting good at this. What else do they need to do? Review. Good reviews. Wherever you Preferred. get your pods. Five iTunes, stars. Stitcher. Four stars. We don't have four stars. Give us five stars. That's uh <laughs> Yeah. Come on, guys. You can do it. Only the best for us. Be good to us. <laughs> uh yeah, this has been Simon Whistler Show. Thank you everybody for listening or watching. However you consume this show, we appreciate you. See you later, y'all.